Okay, that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, it's not. Or it, this was the title was Coroplast or the plastic airplanes. Uh, but really, what I'm talking about is SPAD airplanes. Now, this is not the World War One uh, biplane. It's simple plastic airplane design, and it's something that kind of caught on on the internet. And that's the term that people use to refer to these kinds of airplanes. And it's and it's uh, it's fairly widespread. I mean, there's a there's a good following. There's several several groups. RC groups has a has a whole section like they have one for hand launch. They have one for SPAD planes too. Um, so, okay. First of all, I need my glasses because I can't see. Uh, what is coroplast? Well, you all seen election signs, and I'm sure you all are pretty familiar with with what they are. It's two layers of plastic, two sheets of plastic, and then vertical flutes in between, just like uh, corrugated cardboard, similar to corrugated cardboard, except these are all vertical. And uh, I don't know how it's made. Uh, it's, it's fairly rigid along the lengths of the flutes. Uh, it's a little more bendable along the perpendicular to the flutes. Um, and that's what it is. They make election signs out of it. Uh, they, they actually print uh, the colors on. Uh, this, this is not painted on. It's actually printed on. Um, so that's what coroplast is. It's also referred to as corex, coroplast, high core, core flute. Um, what are some of the advantages of it? Where do you get it? You get it at Regal Plastics. That's the wait till there's an election, or, <laughs> wait or, or you wait for an election. You wait for this. This was harvested uh, the night of the election after, after the voting booths had closed. And I actually, I have a video of this one flying at Hamas Dam. And I sent it to Carrie Brandenburg, and she got a good kick out of it. She, she enjoyed uh, watching one of her signs. And she actually offered to, uh, to send me some more. If you haven't seen that thing fly at Hamas Dam, this is an incredible flying airplane. It doesn't look it, but it, it's, it's simply amazing. Yeah, this one, this one is, is certainly the, it's the best, uh, best flying core class plane that, that I've seen of the ones that, uh, ones that we've made. I've actually only got two. Dan has three. And, and this one is a screaming little plane. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's very maneuverable, and responsive, and fun. OK, what are the advantages of this stuff? Well, one thing is durability. Um, this is Dan's. Oh, no. He has another one where he ran it into a big rock, just you know, full speed into a solid rock. And it, it, it kind of crinkled the, the plastic a little bit. And you know, just imagine with a molded plane or a, a balsa plane or anything else, you run into a rock, it's pretty much shot. Uh, EPP will survive, but these things, they are very tough. And that's probably the main, main advantage. They're inexpensive, uh, they're quick and easy to build, there's not much to them. Uh, you don't have to cover them. Um, they're waterproof. I talked a little bit about rigidity. Uh, they're fuel proof, if, you, if any of us wanted to put a gas motor on them. Um, now the disadvantage. Uh, obviously with something like this that's a fairly rigid material, it's tough to get a decent airfoil. Uh, you kind of, you kind of, you're stuck with what you get. But, like I said, this airplane flies very, very well. Um, Dan's, this is, this is a design called a Daisy, and this is Dan's airplane, uh, D-A-Z-I. It flies very well, and it has an airplane that's, it's, it's gen or airfoil that's generally flat bottomed, uh, and then it's got a spar in it, and I'll talk about that in a minute how he made that. Uh, and then you just fold the top over the spar. It gives you a, a semblance of an airfoil. But honestly, they work very well. And we're talking slope planes here, so we're not talking thermal duration. Um, another disadvantage is the weight. The material is relatively heavy. Uh, you're not going to build a, a floater with this stuff. Uh, another disadvantage, they're hard to paint. Uh, there are some alternatives. Uh, Dan used uh, indelible marker on the bottom of this one, just to make it a little bit different. Um, Sharpie makes these big fat magnum markers that give you a big, uh, with a big white tip, so there's not so much uh, scratching on Those work well. And there are other alternatives that, that you can look into. Uh, Walmart has a, a Krylon paint that's listed as for plastic that I haven't tried yet, but I've got a can of it, so it may work. 
Uh, I talked to a guy at New Mexico or at uh, one of the sign shops, and he said New Mexico Sign Supply has some paint called One Shot that is supposed to adhere to this stuff fairly well. Um, another disadvantage is adhesives. Uh, trying to glue this stuff together or glue things to this stuff. Uh, some of the adhesives, some of the normal adhesives that we use, um, there tend to be problems with. And I'll talk a little bit more about CA in particular um, in a little while. Another sort of a problem is that once you get the airplane finished, um, access to the internal electronic components is, is fairly limited. If you want to get in there and change something, you've got to cut your tape open, unfold it basically. Um, you can't always cut a hatch you know, or design a hatch into the, into the surface. Um, I don't know that it really hurts the strength all that much. Uh, it's just something that you just don't see done very often. Um, this one doesn't have a hatch, it's the same kind of thing. It's taped at the, at the trailing edge and then just fold it over. So if I want to get to something inside, I've got to take that tape apart. Um, for, building, for building the wings, commonly what you do is you run the flutes cordwise. So the strength of the wing doesn't really come from, from the material itself. This one has a spar in it. Um, I'll talk in a minute about the, how to make spars or alternatives for spars. Um, but the technique for building a wing is typically you make yourself a, a pizza cutter looking device. And this is just a big washer that's uh, it's round, rounded off. It has not sharp corners. And then take a straight edge and take your chloroplast. So we're going to pretend that, that I'm going to make a wing out of this and I want to fold it over. So this will be my leading edge here. You take your roller and press down nice and hard and really roll the heck out of it. So you're crushing those vertical flutes. Which way are the flutes going? The flutes are going this way. So that would be cordwise in, right. the, in the cordwise direction, perpendicular to the span. And you actually crush those uh, vertical, vertical uh, flutes in there. And then once you've got that, you've got a place you can fold it, and it'll fold fairly nice then. Hmm. If you try and fold it without doing that, it doesn't fold well. Now another tip uh, regarding folding a wing is to have some kind of a jig made up. Now you can make one up permanently out of wood. What this consists of is a big sheet of plywood or uh, a tabletop or whatever, and then a board that's got a slant to it. Something that you can tuck the nose of this wing underneath there that will tend to keep the, the uh, bottom edge of the wing flat as you fold the top over. Does, does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So you can, you can make one and have a dedicated piece like that, or you can just make, have something like this and clamp it to your workbench and shove the wing under and, as you fold it. So the idea then is you keep the bottom flat and then fold this top, top of the wing over. You have your spar inside already, uh, secured however you like. I'll talk about that in a minute. And then fold the wing over like that over your spar. If you want a flat bottom deer foil, that's fine. This one, I, I, was, I made no attempt for a flat bottom. I wanted a more or less symmetrical. And that's pretty much what I got. The disadvantage what did you one, do differently to get a symmetrical airfoil? 